Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be looking at the Spira Team Requirements Management functionality. When you first log into Spira Team, you will come to the My Page. As you've seen on some of the other videos, when you get to the My Page, you can navigate to the Project Home Page by clicking on the Project Home tab. That takes you into the current project. Now that we're into a project, let's explore the requirements for this particular project. To do that, we click on the Planning Requirements tab, or just click on the Planning link itself. Once we're into the Requirements page, you can now see all of the requirements in a project. The requirements in Spira Team can be organized into a hierarchical matrix. So for example, I can expand this requirement one to show any of the chart requirements. I can collapse levels as well by using the minus button. I can also show levels. So for example, if I want to show just the level two requirements across the tree, I can use show level two. Similarly, for level three, and so on. If I want to show all levels, I can do level nine, or all, all the levels. This is all levels right here. In the requirements tree, each of the requirements will be displayed along with some of the standard fields, such as the importance, which is the priority, the status, which is where it is in its life cycle, from requested through all the way to obsolete at the end. You can see also which release that requirement is scheduled for on the releases column, and who it's assigned to in the owner column. To edit any of the requirements, you can either double click on one of the rows or click on the edit button to the right. Let's try that. So we've now got two rows that are editable. To make a change to a row, you simply choose the value that you're changing and either hit the enter key on the keyboard or the update button to the right. If you want to edit lots of different rows, there's a shortcut as well. You can choose the checkboxes and then choose the edit button on the top right, and that will make all the rows editable. Let's say I want to assign all three requirements to Fred. Or actually, how about to, to Joe? I've chosen Joe, and if I want to change all the rows, I just hit the fill down button. Now they're all filled with a value. Hit update, and now they're all reassigned. There's also a right-click context menu in the requirements module for frequently used items. So if you want to add requirements, delete requirements, indent or outdent, copy or print, you can do that from this menu. So all the items are available also on this toolbar at the top. So for example, if I wanted to create a new requirement under this requirement one, I can simply choose the checkbox, choose insert new requirement, and I've got a requirement here. I'm just going to give it the name requirement three. There you go. If I want to create a child requirement of that, I can just choose its checkbox, and this time choose insert child requirement. Now it's become the parent. I'll give that a name. And there you go. You'll also notice there are two special columns associated with requirements. One is the test coverage column. One is the task progress column. The test coverage column that you see the number of test cases that are linked to that requirement and whether they passed or failed or not. You can also see on the task progress column how many development tasks are associated with that requirement or user story and whether they are on schedule or behind schedule or completed. When we go into a particular requirement, we'll see this in more detail. On this page, there are also some additional editing tools. For example, if you want to copy and paste, you can do that as well. You just choose the items. And you can either cut or copy to the clipboard and then paste it somewhere else by choosing the paste option. There's also the ability to filter. So, for example, let's say we want to um, filter by any requirement that has at least one test failure. Easy enough, just choose the value greater than 0% failed on the filter, hit filter, and there we go. Clear my filter as well. I can also save and retrieve filters. So perhaps I want to filter on several fields and make that a save filter. So let's say I want to find any requirement that is priority one and that is scheduled for the next release. Hit filter, and there you go. And I want to save that. So choose save filter. I'm going to give it a name. So critical version 1.0 requirements, 
save, and now that's saved. And I can then clear my filter to bring everything back. Then to re-filter, I just choose Retrieve Filter, choose that from the list, and there we go. Now, to actually edit a requirement, I can also then go in one level further by clicking on the requirement. This is now the inside of the requirement. You can see that each requirement has a navigation bar on the left that lets you navigate to other parts of the tree very conveniently. And then for the requirement that we're currently on, you can see the name and the, the name as well, and the long description. This long description is a limited length. It can be formatted, and you can have different uh, bullets, lists, tables, links in there. And if you want to see it in a larger view, click on the full screen, and up pops the full screen editor. As well as that, you have all the same standard fields we saw on the previous page, but there's also some additional tabs. For example, on the test coverage tab, you can expand the test case tree to see all of the test cases in the project that could be mapped to this requirement. And on the right-hand side, you can see the test cases that already are mapped to the requirement. Any test case in this right-hand box marked test coverage is a test case that has to be passed for this requirement to be considered fully tested. If you have a brand new requirement that doesn't have any test cases that associate to it yet, you can also create a new test case directly from the requirement using this shortcut. From a development standpoint, as you enter all your requirements, which in an agile methodology are often called user stories, those requirements or stories are then used as the basis for generating technical tasks or development tasks. These will be assigned to the developer to carry out the building of the functionality. So for example, we have here the requirement to add new books to our library system. These three tasks are the development activities that would have to be carried out to actually build that functionality. Here you can add the additional tasks, remove tasks, and when you add a task, that's a new task that a developer will have to carry out for this requirement. The requirement status will derive itself automatically from the, that of the tasks. So when you add tasks to a requirement, initially it will be not started, and all the requirements, all the tasks of the requirement will be not started. When all the tasks are completed, the requirement itself will become automatically completed as well. You can log in and add comments to a requirement as well using the comments tab. For example, let's add a comment right now. So we're adding the comment. Save. That will save the requirement and add the comment to it. There are also custom values you can set on a requirement as well. And importantly, you can also attach documents and screenshots and links. So for example, for this requirement, let's say we wanted to add a new um, hyperlink to a different website. We could do that. Just choose Add New. That brings up the Add Attachment dialog box. We can, if it was a file, we could browse to our hard disk and add it. But for a web link, it's very easy. We just choose the URL option, and then enter the URL and then add the link. So for example, we can just choose URL, and enter it in. There's the link right here. You can also connect Spire Team to a source code management tool, which will be covered in a separate video. And in that situation, you can also view linked documents in the source code repository system to the requirement. Of course, within the system, you can filter and search and sort on, the, on any of the documents to see narrow down if you have a large document list. Moving on though to the history tab, for each requirement in the system, you can also see any of the changes that have ever been made to the requirement. This is a vital feature from an audit standpoint, because if you have a requirement which has been added to the system, and then someone changes the priority or the status, it's very important maybe six months later to go back and understand if something was queried, you know, why did that requirement priority change? Who changed it, and why was it changed, and what value was it before? Also, if you're an administrator, you can also undo the changes by using the admin view. Lastly, on the requirements page, we do have an associations tab. This lets you see all the other items that are linked to this requirement. For example, here you can see some additional requirements and defects that are linked to this requirement. This first requirement here is another requirement somewhere else in the requirements tree. This is very useful where you have a requirement somewhere else in the tree that's not a direct parent or child descendant, 
of this requirement, but has a relationship. So perhaps you may have a use case that's linked to a feature, or maybe it's a policy document that's linked to a requirement. You can use these associations feature to add an association and cross-link it. So for example, if we want to add a new association, we choose the add option, choose requirement, enter the ID if we know it, or just browse from the tree, and pick the requirement right here. hit add, I'm now adding that the uh, association, and there it is. You can also add links from requirements to defects manually using the same feature. In addition, there are some built-in links that you'll see created which have grayed out checkboxes. These are uh, associations generated automatically when you get into test execution. Whenever you run a test case that's linked to a requirement, a mother defect, the defect that comes out of that testing activity will be automatically logged back and linked back to that source requirement with no extra effort. In addition to the various tabs, on the main requirement toolbar, you can also uh, print a requirement out. You can email to someone, either in the system or outside of the system. You can also subscribe to it. Subscribing to it is a form of watching it. That means whenever a change is made to that requirement, it will be emailed to you uh, in through the email system. Or if you have it on your My Page as a, as a widget, it will actually update the RSS feed and the list of subscribed items on the, uh, the My Page. Thanks for listening and learning more about the requirements management features of Spyro Team.